That's great. Thank you, Melvin. Um, is there any evidence to suggest that employed staff are required to carry out these interactions, or could you use self-employed sort of personal trainers somehow as part of their agreement? That's, that's a good question, yeah. So can you kind of subcontract in this kind of work on a possession basis? Uh, I don't know the answer for a fact, but other services do that. So a lot of people who provide health behaviour change uh, interactions in clinical settings are bought in on a possession basis, or there's a commitment to, you know, I want you to deliver this much of a service. So I think it's possible there are examples outside of our industry where that happens. I just wonder, so in the years, you saw me put up a little notice there to hello to the people in the Hogarth that are watching. There are some clubs that you go to where the staff have been there a long time and there's a culture in that building that's really difficult to put your finger on, but there's something going on that's really good and nice and you notice they have really high retention rates. So I just wonder if you can keep a core group of people together who really build in, uh, bought into your philosophy and get this thing, this sense of what it is you're trying to do, I think that might be better. And it's a bit what Aaron was saying yesterday, they train them into the philosophy. You have to buy into what it is we're trying to do. Uh, so I, I don't know. the definite answer but there there's kind of something I think where if you keep a core group of people together that might do something additive 